Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And I'm Adam. And today we've got a really fun episode for you uh, with Elemental coming out this weekend. A new Pixar movie is always an event, kind of one of those studios that really seems to interest pretty much everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, curious to see how Elemental goes. In my opinion, they've kind of been more miss than hit since uh like inside out and coco really a little bit but mm -hmm. uh definitely gonna check it out keep an open mind uh animation looks great so excited for that and with that in mind we have a bracket for you of the 16 best pixar movies seated one through 16 and the three of us are just going to go right through it vote mm -hmm. on each matchup and at the end of it the three of us will tell you definitively Yep. what the best Pixar movie is. Yep. You can't fight it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's seasonal because this was inspired by March Madness. So, you know, we're taking advantage yes. of bracket fever. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, however, it actually did work out because the NBA and NHL playoffs uh, literally just, just ended. So this we were inspired true. by the by the playoffs. Yeah. And if. Uh, you are a, listener, a long time listener to the podcast version where we weren't on YouTube until about a year ago. But before that, we did have an episode where we ranked our top 10 Pixar movies, which was a really fun episode. So if you want to go check that out, that is available on the podcast as well. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out. This will be a little more interesting because we're going to be pitting beloved animated movies, a lot of them from our childhood against each other. So mm -hmm. we'll see how heated this gets. I got a feeling oh. Adam's going to come in with some pretty strong opinions. I just, I just also feel like whatever my top 10 ranking was before, like there's no way I'm going to be consistent with that. Like, <laughs> no, I know. I was, just I have no idea what one word. Yeah. I was going to say the same, Adam, not only do I know I'm not going to be consistent, but that top 10 episode, it was a, a cumulative of all three yeah. of my top tens. Oh, that's and I, right. I besmirched Wally by giving it too low of a rating. Cause I hadn't seen it in years and you guys had it really, really high and that dragged it down. So I single-handedly, <laughs> I just I kneecapped Wally when we did the top <laughs> ten. I just and, and yeah, he, almost no ended chance. the entire <laughs> podcast. So I literally, <laughs> so this should be fun. Yeah, yeah. I felt bad so about that we'll go thing. through the bracket really quick here. Again, it's just sixteen movies, so we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. But uh, just really quickly for how we decided to seed this, uh, we've done a few of these brackets before, so kind of similar. Just took the average score from Letterboxd, IMDb, and Rotten Tomatoes, averaged them out. I also added some of my own ratings in here. So mm. I'm the one who made it, so I felt free to do that. Oh, there's Wally with the number two seed. Just a big so, middle finger to <laughs> your truly. Yeah, I do have the uh, poster for all the movies right next to it, and I thought about just putting a middle finger right <laughs> next to Wally. <laughs> Pointed yeah, just, straight at Dylan. For Dylan. <laughs> yes. So, Toy Story, the number one seed. Wally, the number two. Number three seed, Ratatouille. Uh, number four seed, Toy Story 4. The Incredibles, the number five seed. Number six, Toy Story 2. Number seven, Inside Out. Eight, Coco. Nine, Finding Nemo. Wow. Which was a little lower than I thought it would be. Uh, ten... Monsters, Inc., 11 is up, 12 is Soul, Toy Story 4 is at 13, 14 is The Incredibles 2, 15 is A Bug's Life, and 16 is Turning Red. It was very interesting to see how some of these were rated on different sites. I mean, yeah. a lot of them were very highly rated, but Letterboxd was a little more inconsistent than I'm used to it being. Interesting. I don't remember everything off the top of my head, but... Uh, I remember being surprised at how highly rated Coco was on that site compared to Inside Out being a little lower. Like yeah. Letterboxd is what dragged Inside Out down to seven for sure. Interesting. Yeah, and up at with the, at the 11 seed. I up is like an interesting one. I mean, for, for me personally, one through about 11 or 12, if you tell me that's your favorite Pixar movie, I'm not really going to argue with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they just have that many amazing movies and obviously Agreed. we grew up with a lot of these, but a few newer ones 
Mm -hmm. uh, the newest being Soul, and then Toy Story 4, surprisingly good, and Inside Out and Coco, kind of after that first wave of basically Toy Story through Toy Story 3, where almost everything was phenomenal. So Smash it, yeah. Yeah. Anything you guys want to say before we dive into it? No, I'm I'm good to go. Let's let's fire it up. Let let's the go. bloodshed begin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In true Pixar tradition. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this works. Haven't tested this out yet. Here we go. Ooh. Fancy. So we've got Toy Story, the number one overall seed against Turning Red, the number 16 seed. I feel like this mm. one's pretty easy, but we will all say what our vote is, and then the winning the winner, two out of three. I'll hit the vote button here and just move it right along. So I think mm -hmm. Toy Story, all around. Yeah, I think uh, similar to the Nuggets destroying the Timberwolves in round one. I think this is just not even you know they're really kind right. of two different classes of movies almost. This so. is the Vegas Golden Knights beating the crap out of Florida. <laughs> That's what this is. Eight and what is it? So nine I, to three was the final just, yeah, score. Toy, of the last Story, game. Toy Story is just so classic, so perfect. Turning Red, good little movie. Um, you know, it, it was we had an episode on it. If you want to go look that mm -hmm. up, yeah. Um, we all enjoyed yeah, it. Congratulations but. to Turning Red for even making the tournament. They made the tournament. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All around, guys. Well done. Mm -hmm. well done. Exactly. <laughs> so, Toy Story all around here. <laughs> now, an interesting eight versus nine matchup. Ooh. Coco and Finding Nemo. This I one love the color and stuff in Coco, and I, I love the, like kind of the history and stuff that they pull into it. Uh, not the history, the culture and stuff that they pull into it. Yeah. But I have to go find an Nemo. It's it's probably it was my favorite Pixar movie for a very long time. Yeah, a lot of people our age finding Nemo really hit at the right time. Um, yeah. Finding Nemo is phenomenal. It tells like I think it's really impressive what it does structurally, where it kind of tells two complete stories simultaneously. Yeah, and it's. Fun. It's really funny. I mean, the turtle is classic and Russian probably one of the best side Pixar characters ever. Uh -huh. um, there are parts of Coco that I like better than anything in Finding Nemo. Um, I think I like the ending a little bit better. I really like the music and just everything once they get to the land of the dead onward, mm -hmm. pretty much in Coco for me, I think is better. Mm -hmm. But I also don't love the first like 15 minutes of Coco that much. Um, I always just felt like the whole no music at all conceit was like a little bit much. Like, <laughs> it, like just saying you're not allowed to be a musician, I feel like would have accomplished the same thing and not required some weird suspension of disbelief on my part. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I, I do think I have to go find, I do think finding Nemo is just a better movie beginning to end. Although Coco does hold a very special place in my heart. Yeah, this one, this one is, is pretty tough. I agree with those points, Nate. I think like the, the emotional um, highs or, or lows of, of Coco, it just seems like that, that ending is kind of, yeah, it, is really more impactful. But Finding Nemo is just kind of consistently good. And it was, like you said at the time, you know, for our generation, came along at the perfect time. And I am one of those people. I remember watching this uh, with, like, my family at some sort of gathering. But I was in theaters with, like, my aunts and, like, watching this and loving it and everybody loving it. So I'm going to give it to Finding Nemo just by just by a hair. So you can vote for yeah. Coco if you want. and. uh you know, I'm surprised that you guys uh, think it's so close because I, I don't think it's close at all. But I, that, that's not to say Coco's bad. That's I just fair. I can't. I surprised. That's all. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm going Nemo. Yeah. You know, maybe it just has to do with Dylan and I going to that immersion school and just learning a lot maybe. about like Mexico and South yeah. America as kids Honestly. and just kind of seeing a lot of that come to life. Yeah. And, like, we like we celebrated the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, in elementary school every single year. We had a huge day for it. So gotcha. uh, for me, at least, that's a strong part of my connection to Coco outside of yeah. just like the colors and the way everything looks and how strong that yeah, ending some... and good the music is. There's just it's just a mm -hmm. it just kind of scratches that itch like nothing that's else fair. really does for me. And it felt that's like fair. when it came out, I, a lot of people were like, oh, I just couldn't really get into it or like oh, just the music and just I don't know. I wasn't really I couldn't really get into it. It wasn't really like 
my thing. Whereas, yeah, I'm with you, Nate. I felt like I was, I was totally like there for it the whole time. Yeah. I was that like, definitely okay. helps. That definitely yeah. Helps. Like, I, I, Cause I mean, not that this is at mm. all similar. It took Spanish for a bunch of years, like growing up, not as young as you guys, but also like learned about all that stuff, learned about like the culture and Dia de los Muertos and a lot of the things surrounding that. So I was familiar with it and I liked that. It just mm-hmm. like, didn't speak to me in the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That, that matters. Moving on to the next matchup, Toy Story 3 versus Toy Story 4. Um, I mean, I think this is a pretty easy choice, although I feel a little bad for Toy Story 4 just mm-hmm. falling in against another Toy Story movie like right away in the first round because I do think Toy Story 4 is shockingly good. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think it's a really, really good movie. I also think you can make a pretty solid argument that it's thematically richer or more unique than three is three treads a lot of the same ground that two does, but it Mm. kind of wraps up the whole Andy trilogy in such a beautiful way that I'm not going to like ding it for that. Yeah. But toy story four is kind of something that went in a direction that nobody really asked for (laughs) and turned out to be kind of quietly brilliant, I think, but Mm. I mean, I, I can't, vote for toy story four over toy story three yeah no yeah uh toy story three uh, one of the best endings of all time maybe yeah uh, that's it yeah especially to a trilogy so um yeah i'm gonna go three it's gotta be three i also uh, still have to say three because i haven't seen four so you still haven't seen four yep we're gonna watch oh, that someday been... soon adam it's yeah, like yeah. i'm not kidding it is way better than it has any right to be yeah, it's not for the it's not for lack of being like, oh, I think it's gonna suck, so I'll just skip it. It's just like eh, I just haven't watched you it. You missed it, you know? and then you just haven't gotten to it. Yeah. Yep. So Toy Story Three. And now we've got the Incredibles Ooh. against Soul. And this is gonna be well, <laughs> Adam just I, I just I, I know I know what's gonna happen. Like I I really Soul spoke to me uh, at a time in my life I really needed it, and so that's my pick, but like that's mm-hmm. not to say like Incredibles is one of their best movies, like ever. So it's yeah. it's hard to say no, it's completely better, but like my, my pick is soul, but I know I'm gonna get beat out here, so that's why I'm yeah. going with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Soul, but The Incredibles is a five star movie for me. It's yeah. one of their I think I've got like four or five like full on five star masterpieces from Pixar and mm-hmm. the Incredibles is one of them. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I recently rewatched it, reaffirmed it's five star status with me. And I think I have sold a four and a half. It was one of my favorite movies that year, but yeah, got to go the Incredibles. Yeah. I yeah. Both at five. So like, I, like <laughs> I was out of town when you rewatched it mm-hmm. and I saw that you had marked it on letterboxd. And then I went over to my parents' place after I got back, and my dad said, I see Dylan finally came around on The Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't think he dislikes it. Like, no, he only had it as a four and a half, but it is clearly a five-star movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yep. So I thought I'd share that. So The Incredibles moves on. And now Ratatouille and Incredibles 2. I also think this is a pretty easy choice. Looking at this, I didn't feel like there were too many tough choices in the first round. But I mean, once we get to round two, everything after that, I feel like it's is going to be, be like it's going to like break your soul in half to vote against some of these movies. Yeah. But this is I, uh, for me. This is another one of their just I, I love this movie to death. Yeah, I'm going to give Incredibles 2 some credit because they did take their time in finding the right um Mm-hmm. plot or like right you know the screen screen um screenplay and stuff because they didn't mm-hmm. want to mess it up because of how good the first one is so i'll give them credit like they do a, an honest sequel that's incredible but uh but it's ratatouille <laughs> ratatouille was so much fun uh and i know you guys weren't huge fans of everything everywhere all at once but it's seeing like rakakuni like that that show up in that movie because of this like it's mm-hmm. it's you can't deny its impact uh ratatouille yeah. is phenomenal Yep, I uh, also recently rewatched Incredibles 2 because I really had only seen that once ever. And um, yeah, it's a fun little time, but it's not as great as the first one. And Ratatouille, I was really late to the party on that. I think uh, I finally watched that for the first time a couple years ago, maybe a few years ago. We discussed it on the podcast. Really just wonderful movie. The way they visually represent taste and smell and everything is fantastic. Um, And really the only thing that Incredibles 2 
that I felt like really, really would stuck with me is the baby raccoon fight, which is just fantastic. And one of <laughs> yeah. the best little things they've ever come up with. But uh, besides that, yeah, got to go Ratatouille here. All right. Ratatouille moves on. This one's going to be interesting. This is Toy Story 2 versus Up. And I'm curious to see how pe- how we sort of handle all the Toy Story movies because it's really easy, I think, in your mind to just kind of throw all your Toy Story love at one Toy yeah. Story movie mm-hmm. and then vote on some other ones. For me, though, I do like Up. I think I'm lower than pretty much everyone else I know on Up. I think it's very good. I do think it gets a little overrated in the Pixar canon. And I think Toy Story 2 is maybe their most underrated movie. Mm, okay. For how, I mean, one, you know, is, is great it? and started it all. And then the way that three just kind of capped that off. Mm-hmm. I think Toy yeah, Story 2 gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. My vote here is for Toy Story 2 easily. Interesting. Yeah, Toy Story 2. For me, it definitely does get lost in the shuffle. Uh, so much so to the point that can you just give me like a two sentence recap of the plot of Toy Story two? <laughs> oh, so Andy gets taken by uh, Big L from the toy boat. Woody. Excuse me. Yeah, I was gonna say, what the hell did I just say? He said Andy um, gets kidnapped. Andy. Way dark. That was the way really different dark first Sid, uh, that's, that's, Andy. Yeah, if, if Sid lives or if Sid doesn't get terrified in the in the first Sid one, lives. that's what happens. Hold on. Adam is just, Adam is like, I'm rewriting Toy Story right kidnapped. now. Hold on. Get murdered. You know what I learned like last week? What? Do you guys remember the movie Brink? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. You texted the Disney me about Channel that. original movie with the rollers with the skaters. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The kid who played the lead in Brink voiced Sid. <laughs> okay. Is that nuts? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> that is weird. In the first really weird. and third movies. The first one made sense, at least, because he was like a sort of child. I don't want to say like star, but he was in a lot of stuff. He's a child actor. yeah. And then he wasn't really in much after that, but he did come back to voice Sid again in Toy Story 3. But uh, yeah, Toy Story 2, Woody gets Kidnapped. stolen by Al, brought to Al's toy barn. That's where you meet Jesse and um, oh, Ross okay. and the prospector. Okay. And then yep. the other toys led by Buzz try to res- like venture across town to rescue him. Yep. Okay, yep. Okay. And it's got and the then... whole like buzz zerg side plot. Mhm. Mhm. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. That's all coming back cuz yeah, mm-hmm. I I definitely enjoyed that. And that was yeah, 1999. Yep. So, yeah. Um, you know, uh it's been a while, but I uh I'm inclined to agree Nate cuz I feel like up it starts so strong and it's got that scene that everybody remembers, but then like I feel like most people don't really remember like the rest of it and how kind of like it it's fun but it's a little bit gets a little ridiculous and i i don't know i i think for consistency's sake i think i'm gonna go toy story 2 as well i'd say the same thing uh, consistency in toy stories it's it's great all the time i love up but there's mm-hmm. definitely highlights of that movie that i i like I'll tune out while I'm watching it and be like, Oh, I got to make sure I'm here for this. Like when they meet Doug, uh, when they find Kevin, the snipe, uh, and like mm-hmm. the whole shooing him away. That's my favorite part. And mm-hmm. some of that stuff's really, really good. But some of the chase scenes towards the end with all the dogs, it's just kind of like, okay, like let's get through it. Um, so I'll go toy story too, but a solid, just a hard, it's a hard choice. Yeah. And this I think is the hardest first round choice. Inside Out versus Monsters Inc. Yeah, it's, this one it's, it's a beloved one uh, that I from my youth versus the modern beloved one that hit me as an adult. Yeah, <laughs> I mean a Minnes- with a Minnesota native and all. That. I know. Like, <laughs> so I'll, I'll make you guys choose because I'll just because I it's it's a hard choice here. I'm gonna go with Monsters Inc. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump in and go with Inside here. Out. <laughs> can i flip you off on youtube is that allowed i don't know well you can, you can just do the <laughs> fake devil birds oh i'm my going, God. I'm the, going the inside friends. out thing <laughs> um i'm going inside out because yeah i also i have it as a five-star movie i think i might have monsters inc as one but i just i've seen fi- inside out multiple times you know even like recently and it just always hits for me always yeah. I, I just can't help it um 
I just think it's such a like it's a great concept that they nailed visually and I felt like of of the yeah of, of my adult years the my adult Pixar years it's definitely like my favorite um recently so yeah these are both Pete Doctor well, movies too yeah I mean Pete Doctor is the man yeah he is he really uh, is I think I think I got to go with Inside Out here yeah. Woo! um I, I, like, it's Monsters Inc though God, it's just these are both just so, so great. Good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and yeah. Monsters Inc. just being like, a of Monsters eight, like in 90, 90 some minutes. The ending is phenomenal. The characters are great. The world is amazing. I also just love the uh, opening credits in Monsters Inc. Kind of an homage to 101 Dalmatians, which is, I think, like mm -hmm. the most underrated Disney animated movie ever. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, it's it's really, really great. I Monsters Inc. might be I might rewatch that tonight. Honestly, out of all these, that, that feels like the one it's been too long since I revisited. But uh, inside out, it is that marches on. And now Wally against a bug's life. Again, a bug's life. Cute Great, little movie. Lead the charge. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, better than most of what DreamWorks brings to the table. Yeah. Or Illumination for that matter. Or, you know. Most other studios, but Wally's a masterpiece. Yeah, Wally's a five. It's Wally. Yeah. Um, is Wally that good though? No, I'm kidding. Uh, Wally. <laughs> we riot. He actually Get watched it again last night and hates it more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get your pitchforks. We're we're finding Dylan. Uh. <laughs> All right, Wally moves on, and oh. now that brings us to the Adam might just. No, oh, quarter, I, like, quarter I, know, I, I I think I know where this is going, especially based on what was what was the first round with this. I'm still going Finding Nemo, but th this is probably my hardest choice because Toy Story is so iconic. It's their first one. It did so many things right. It's a five star movie. It like what can you say bad about Toy Story? Uh, Finding Nemo is just one of the first ones that really grabbed me and really like not just hit home, but was like, like was fun all the way through, had like some interesting characters. One of the ones that like, as we got a little bit older, I saw some of the, um, you know, Pixar always does like there's a scene or a shot of something from their next movie and like saw some of those Easter eggs in there. And P Sherman 42 all the way Sydney is forever etched in my memory. Just mm -hmm. some of that stuff. I, I'm going to go find an email because I, I also think it might lose. So. All right. You can go next, Nate. I, yeah, I, 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 I forced you to break your heart last time. So. <laughs> I've got to vote Toy Story here. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Finding Nemo is also fantastic. I mean, we're at the point now where every movie remaining is phenomenal. So mm -hmm. there aren't really wrong choices going yeah. forward here. But I, I've got to go with Toy Story. You guys remember how funny their movies used to be? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. go back and watch these. They like their humor, I feel like for me, has been the biggest thing that's kind of gone downhill where it's mm -hmm. just a lot, it's just less clever. I feel like their jokes are a lot more obvious now. There are some jokes in these That's two fair. movies that are, I mean, Woody calls the little green dudes zealots <laughs> yeah. in the first story movie, which is hilarious <laughs> and just not the kind of joke that I feel like I ever see in a Pixar movie anymore. Yeah. And there's also some in Finding Nemo as well. So mm -hmm. both great, but I got to go with Toy Story. Yeah, I I want to I want to vote Finding Nemo, but Toy Story is just it's just it started all and like kind of like you said the the humor and just the way they laid the groundwork of these characters that like even you can tell, you know, the the second fi you know, Finding Dory is not on this list because yeah. they they weren't able to turn Finding Nemo into a franchise. I mean, the way they were with Toy Story because they just it just seems with with Toy Story they created these characters that were like instantly classic and, and they were able yeah. to like cultivate it well, the right way. So much more like interesting. Every kid has had that. Like, what do I, what do I toys do when I'm What's not going? There? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I finding the emo, I love it. It, I remember, you know, it really, I felt like it was kind of a jump forward in the animation, like with the water at the time. Oh, yeah. I just remember being oh, yeah. in the theater the being like, this looks incredible. The reef looks incredible. Um, and it has a lot of great moments. Uh, one of my personal favorites, but I, yeah, I, just by a hair, I'm going the original Toy Story. All right. Respectable. And Respectable. now 
Ooh. It stays difficult. Toy Story 3 <laughs> against The Incredibles. And I will just kick this one off and say I'm going with The Incredibles here. But, I mean, shit. Th these two are powerhouses, really. One of these Toy Stories has to go down, right? Like, you can't have all three. Like, it's all, just, we're all I mean, three going to be in the semis? This is my point right? earlier, like, though. We're like, eventually you're just going to stop voting for Toy Story movies due to just, like, fatigue. Uh, yeah, mm. just like they can't all win. They can't Toy all Story be domination. Movie, right? Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Three um, out of four. I I'm. Do you want to go next, Adam? <laughs> I can go, but it's gonna make your decision really easy. Uh, no, that's okay. Go for it. Okay, then. I'm going The Incredibles. Okay, I am also going to go The Incredibles. Okay, I, yeah, just barely. All, Toy Story. All 3. love and respect is three. Amazing but, ending. Yeah. yeah, we've 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 uh praised it a lot but yeah incredibles just for the originality and just when you watch it it just feels like the people who made it were having so much fun and we're just yeah. like isn't this incredible yeah. and you're like it is incredible it's just great <laughs> <laughs> still i think the best superhero movie ever made i, I would uh i would second that the tough argument and Batman now superman though i'm sorry <laughs> Everything Zack Snyder's ever done. Both their names are Martha. Did you, their moms. <laughs> Both their moms' names are Martha. Do you know that? No, nah, dude. I thought Wonder Woman. I actually didn't know that. Better. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> oh, well, I just ruined the pivotal point. Yeah, there's I no point. The now. ending. I just it's ruined like the eight hours long. No reason for me to. I was gonna watch it this week, Dylan. But listen, the the Snyder cut's only like four hours and fifteen minutes, so you could have. Yeah, but sure. <laughs> um, all right, enough of DC invading our Pixar bracket. <laughs> Next <laughs> studio, two studios final. that don't belong in the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same breath. The next quarterfinal matchup is Ratatouille and Toy Story Two, and. Man, I'll, I'll go first. I'm gonna go Ratatouille. I just think the way they, the, yeah. it was brilliant. I, I've only seen it once, but I loved it, and I, I respect the hell out of Toy Story two for the consistency. And remember, like I'm bringing, I'm remembering, and like I, I do love that movie, but Ratatouille, man, it's just like, like a food, a food movie. Like the way they pulled <laughs> that off, I, I mean, I, that wasn't a direction I would have thought they would have gone, and they just nailed it. So I'm gonna go Ratatouille. Yeah, I'm um, hungry. Just talk, thinking about Ratatouille. Yeah, you got to watch that again, man. That, that, <laughs> movie, that movie will make you hungry too. Like, would, watch yeah, it and I mean, like as, it, it pops and it spins, and you're like, "Ooh, ooh, I, I want cheese now. I want cracker. Like, I want to have know. something while I'm doing, you know, pasta." Oh my god. Oh man, I'm going Ratatouille um, as well. Yeah, I know. That's that was my pick, but we gave so much love to toy story two in the first one like oh it's underrated and it is no one no one respects it and like here we are just straight no up does. nope you're gone bud so <laughs> Brad is doing i mean it's it, it we gave it, it its lost, respect it lost to a powerhouse let's not yeah, yeah it, it, it won we in the first go round to Bugs life over it <laughs> yeah it had a it had a, it had a fun little run right well jeez. Uh, all inside right inside out I, and Wally as the last matchup of the quarterfinals. This is harder for you guys. I, it's Wally for me. It's inside out for me. <sighs> it, yeah, it's uh, Wally are... marches on. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, <laughs> yeah, good. All right, I'm I'm okay. With Criminally that. underrated. I was able to out. vote the right way that I that, that I felt in my heart, and also not be the reason why Wally lost. And <laughs> yeah. So that's a good lane for me. Thank yeah. You. Talk, Dylan tired of being the heel in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> no. And now the semi first semifinal matchup, Toy Story Oof. and The Incredibles, probably my two favorite Pixar movies. I just can't choose. I can't. And it's been a long time since time since I've seen the the original Toy Story. Um, so maybe that's a detracting factor here. But like how iconic Buzz was, how cool he was when he when he jumps on the bed or he gets un unpackaged and jumps on the bed yeah. and is talking to his little modulator and uses his little laser. Like it's it's such an iconic thing. It launched the entire brand, right? Like how do you vote against it? Um, so I guess for that reason, I'll, I'll go with it. You're going as to Toy Story. I, I'll go with Toy Story. Maybe that makes this a little bit more interesting, but because um, I do love you know Jack Jack and. Edna mode and all that. Oh, <laughs> Edna mode. Yeah. 
I mean, these are two of my favorite movies of all time, but I also think that I have to go with Toy Story here. Um, I could really go either way, and I kind of do want to go The Incredibles, but it's probably the big gap between how recently I've seen The Incredibles. Um, yep. But since Toy Story is already advancing, I'll vote for The Incredibles and and you know give it some dignity. It went out. Ge- Good the game. Gentleman sweep. The gentleman sweep. <laughs> Can't, went down swinging. Toy Story with the gentleman sweep. <laughs> Incredible. <Yep. laughs> and now, oh, this is even harder. <laughs> this is harder. Ratatouille and Wally wow. are possibly their two most bold movies. That's what I was gonna say. Like, These are the two that work and very well could not have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mm-hmm. remember when Wally came out, a lot of people uh, didn't like it right away because it wasn't as much dialogue as some of their movies. It's a lot more visual in storytelling and setting things up, and it's not so much, uh, you know, characters going back and forth and having banter or being like funny, quirky, weird. It's just like you, Wally is that, mm-hmm. but Eva is that like honed, interesting, like futuristic thing that you get, robot mm-hmm. that you get, and where all these problems and stuff are in the background, and I. I don't think people gave it the the, the animating credit it was due. Um, oh yeah, it looks so fuck. I mean, what they did, well, the, with the future yeah, but, world, the space stuff. Well, being able to personify like human emotions through robots that don't have a human face and don't have like necessarily human appendages. You know, he doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. have like fingers. He does. They're you know mm-hmm. two or three, but um, the way they do some of that stuff, also relying on uh, some like two thousand one, a space odyssey mm-hmm. uh, towards the end. Um, I'm going to go with Wally. I've always loved it. I think more than more than a lot of people, but Mm -hmm. this is the hardest one for me. Yeah. I I do think the way that they designed Wally is genius. Yeah. (laughs) Um, The way that they were able to put that together, like with the eyes, Adam, you said, and like kind of the claws or like his hands that can grab stuff and the way he moves around is it makes it so easy to connect with this little trash robot (laughs) like it's just so simple and And it works so well and then on the flip side ratatouille gets you to like relate and cheer for like a rat (laughs) and like and and it it gets you and it pulls off being like a, a foodie movie it pulls off being almost like it's very interesting how both of these movies one is so futuristic and imaginative and sci fi and the other is just like this could be happening at a restaurant in Uptown right now, like this. Yeah. You know, but I, you know, I go far, but not like but the themes and like what it's actually about in the setting. It's like it's just in a restaurant. It's about food. It's like you anybody know, can cook. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. It's about yeah. You know, it's something that we all experience every day. And Wally is just like, all right, we're just gonna take you on this crazy imaginative sci-fi thing. Like you just gotta trust yeah. us for like, everything. The the big the first half of Wally, I think is better than the first half of Ratatouille, but I think the second half of Ratatouille is better than the second half of Wally. Oh, I'd agree I mean, with that. The food the, critic scene. The, is the so speech great. there at the end like wraps up Ratatouille in a way that few monologues have ever wrapped up and like accentuated a movie. Mm-hmm. Oh man, this is just this is so freaking hard. I, I will say the Ratatouille ride at Disney is fucking dope, so... That's oh fun. well in that case <laughs> <laughs> just say that but um uh, one of us has to say something this eventually. is the toughest this is the toughest one so yeah, far for me I th- this has been the hardest one for me um <laughs> man i think my heart belongs to ratatouille here yeah. it just it does to Remy. yeah <laughs> yeah it's just the more like the artsiness of it and like Paris looks so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that speech at the end, like the themes of Ratatouille just really, really connect with me. And it's also an interesting movie where like it came out when we were in high school and I went through a weird little stretch where I was like animated movies are for little kids. kids. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't really yeah. like Ratatouille when it came out because I was just yeah. being stupid and rebellious. And, and I rediscovered it. <laughs> as an adult and it's it's just so good i mean kind of the same thing with wally i had a greater appreciation for that when that came out though 
mm-hmm. I think just for how it looked. Yeah. And the sci-fi elements of it, which I mean, still, this is, Wally's also just one of the best science fiction movies ever made. So yeah. good. I mean, outside of being one of the best animated movies of all time, it's a phenomenal science fiction movie. You can't go wrong with either of these. They're both five star movies for me, but uh, yeah. my, I think I'm going to go with Ratatouille. All right. My my heart is very split. And I and so I must defer simply to my mind and my imagination. I love sci fi. I got to give just the slight edge to Wally. And wow. we've come full circle. Yeah, wow. I know, I know. And I, I had to do you it. You dropped it down last time, and now you're pushing it into the final <laughs> single-handedly. <laughs> oh. Woo, that was All right. Both of those are deserving. Both of those yeah. are deserving. Yeah. You know. We've got a Toy Story, Wally, all Pixar final. <laughs> all, all, all Pixar final. All Who'd Pixar have thought Pixar that? Yes. Who'd have thought? We'd start. We'd Didn't start see it hearing. coming. Yep. Um, performing way better than the Big Ten does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, These ones also kind of interesting opposites. Again, you have kind of, you know, the outer space world versus like, you know, toys. Everybody, you know, toys in a, in a room. That What do they do in your room when you're gone? Very Everyone understands that. And also way more characters. Toy Story 4, you know, or Toy Story. Yeah. Big ensemble. Really well laid out side characters everywhere. Wally, pretty much, I mean a solo movie for most of it. And then mostly two characters for the rest. Um, yeah. Very interesting. I'm going to, uh, since I had to go last, I'm going to go first this time. I'm going to say toy story. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make Nate make the, uh, the deciding factor here. Um, but maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, I, I don't want to overhype Wally because it is, I think one of my favorites, but both of I, these movies are deserving of all the hype you give them. Yes. Yeah, I uh I mean it launched the brand. How do you how do you hate Toy Story? How do you how do you pick against something you don't, that is just you don't so... hate Toy Story, you just love it more. You can't, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's okay. So yeah, so yeah, I'll I'll make it difficult for Nate and make this interesting. Um I'm gonna go Wally. You know, it's funny how so I watch pretty much every animated movie that comes out that looks even remotely interesting to me. Yeah. And I read a lot of like best animated movie of all time lists. And one pet peeve that I have is whenever a list just puts Snow White at number one because (laughs) it was first. Yeah. Like this idea that nobody's made a better one since. Or even that the other ones like wouldn't have never been made if it wasn't. Yeah, of course they would have that. Yeah. 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 Um, (laughs) So it's weird for me to think of that kind of thought that I have whenever Snow White gets brought up, which I do think is a very good movie, but it bothers me when it gets kind of thrown up with some, I don't think it's like one of the 10 best animated movies ever made. I I think it belongs in the top like 50. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I sort of have a weird relationship with this now where I kind of think against that when I think about how Toy Story is like the first Pixar movie, but I also don't think that that's why I think it's the best one. I would no. agree with that. I yeah. mean, in the yeah. sense of it launching that franchise, it deserves it helps. all the credit for that. Yeah. But they also just created some of the most memorable characters in the history of cinema. Mm-hmm. What a cool world. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, I, I think there are elements of Wally that are more impressive. I mean, it certainly looks better than the first Toy Story movie. That's just due mm-hmm. to technology. Like, if, like, yeah. Years of advancement in their animation style. And it's a, a bolder story. Yeah. And anybody who picks Wally over toy story, I'm not really going to argue with them at all, but I just think the way that toy story, like it's, it's our world, but it created a whole little world like through in the cracks of our own world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way that Mm -hmm. they fit there and how creative that is, like I'm voting for toy story here. Clearly. Yeah. Um, The characters are iconic and they're hilarious and i'm ne- i'm never not impressed with the way that the writers kind of come up with the creative ways to have these like escapes or break-ins or the way that they use the world around them and these like random toys mm-hmm. to kind mm-hmm. of get where they need to go it it's just insanely creative the barrel of monkeys don't they use yep. that as like a they do they fail with that though it's not but long that's still, and the <laughs> army men 
the army men, the way they use them at the beginning, are great. Dog. But like when they're when they're putting together the escape from Sid's house, mm -hmm. that's just fantastic. Yeah. And there's so much clever and creative stuff in this movie. Not to say there isn't in Wally in spades, but again, I do think the second half of Wally is a little weaker than the first half. And Toy Agreed. Story, I think, is just again the consistency of those movies, like all the way through from beginning to end, and for all mm. four of them, really, is just insanely impressive to me. So I am voting Toy Story here as well. <laughs> Toy Story is the champ, and, uh, and somehow yeah, that let's didn't... Uh, see if I can bring up the other I'll screen. Yeah, um, I'll, and just... I also, I'll say it too. Like you know, I think there we go. We'll with... recap. With Toy Story winning, um, I think each of us. Oh, now the the sound is doubling up. Sorry about that. Um, each of us had Pixar movies that we would have picked over Toy Story, but when those came up, it was only one out of the three of us. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like part of this is how the bracket was laid out. That not like because I feel like when we did our top Pixar movies. I can't remember which one actually did Toy Story win our collection. I think it. I think it did. It did. Maybe okay. I'll have to go re-listen to that episode. Yeah, because kind of for the same reason, I feel like. I feel like you know it might not be if I just put them straight on a list, I might not have it number one. Like I picked The Incredibles over Toy Agreed. Story, but it went two out of three. And then like Adam, you went Finding Nemo over Toy Story. Yep. But it just didn't have you know so. It just didn't happen for the for it to get knocked off the top, but yeah, I mean, it's just a it's, it's just, just so one of the strong. best. Yeah, it's it's so in my strong. opinion one of the fifty best movies ever made. So yeah, it's in my top ten. Yeah, so like, <laughs> and that's not even we haven't even talked about like the cast of that movie, like the, all the voice oh, acting, incredible that's in there. voice cast, like unbelievable talent that they got for that movie. Like yeah, just mm -hmm. even like Tom Hanks and um and Tim Allen, like those were like top of their game, just unbelievable. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it had to come out swinging for for them to launch that and be a successful studio. It had to be a very successful movie. Not to say that any of these other ones that they've come out with that are good couldn't have done the same thing, but uh, to choose to kind of take a gamble, I'd say on on this type of concept where you're saying like it's in the cracks. It's something everybody believes or can see themselves believing mm -hmm. um, and nailing it and really yeah. really getting it. Like it just it had to it had to hit and it did. And you know uh, also just looking at I think our final four. I mean, I think Toy Story, The Incredibles, Ratatouille, and Wally. -E. Yeah, I mean, I think at least for me, I think that's fives across the board, right there. Yeah, and same. That, yeah, that that I would mean, be my final four. And I feel like if you know, um, you know, if, if I was to bring up this this Pixar bracket with someone, I maybe wouldn't do the whole thing. I would just say like, all right, these four movies: Toy Story, Incredibles, Ratatouille, Wally. -E. What's yeah? Who's, what's your favorite out of those? Because I mean that is the, that those are just four really incredible, well executed stories, and yeah, kudos to Pixar for just crushing it for two decades now, going on yeah. three. <laughs> but you know, they've some of their latest stuff. Hopefully, Elemental. I mean, all the movies we mentioned. That's an insanely high bar, but hopefully, they maybe get back on track or can uh, get one that at least could crack the top sixteen because it feels like yeah. You know, some of the last they're, ones. They're still good. Not they're just they're not still good. Different. They're all they're always a good yeah. time. It's just not on that level. Yeah. Their floor they is so much higher than others. Really high bar. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, oh, you're not churning out masterpieces every year now? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> that make me laugh every time and make me cry every time. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> and just like bury their way into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I need one of those per year minimum. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It is. I mean, it Make really it. is. Toy Story through Toy Story three is one of the best runs for any studio ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, agree. Um, all right. Well, this was fun. Uh, obviously, we'll get to Elemental and get that review to uh, all of you folks as soon as we can. Um, was there anything else you wanted to mention, or uh, is it Nate's turn to put a wrap on the show? I'm good. I think take it, it away when you're ready, Nate. All right, take it away. Thanks for the adventure. Now go have a new one. <laughs>